Today, I have a Dell Dimension E510 that I pulled out of storage. I told a few folks on Discord about this, and almost immediately someone showed interest in it. I told them that I'd poke at it, clean it up, and make sure it works before sending it off. The Dell Dimension E510 was a decently powerful home computer released in the mid-2000s, intended as a general purpose family computer for the consumption and creation of multimedia. Uh, well, my family needs a new computer. Some of my kids are really into games, and I do a little video editing, you know. This particular unit has a Pentium 4 630 with hyper-threading, a gig and a half of DDR2 SD RAM, and a Western Digital 80 gig SATA hard drive. That's it. No other options were selected for it. Seriously, it's using onboard graphics and doesn't have the optional multimedia card reader. Bare bones. That all said, this machine does have a DVD burner, plenty of USB ports, PCIe, and is capable of running Windows XP in both 32 and 64 bit flavors. This combination of features is pretty appealing to anyone wanting to run legacy PCIe hardware that only has XP support. With all that out of the way, let's dive in. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is make sure this power supply won't explode on me. In an ATX power supply, the power supply turn on signal wire is this green wire. In order to, for the power supply to be turned on outside of the machine, you simply ground that wire. When I plug this power supply in, provided it doesn't explode, it should just turn right on. So it seems like it hasn't exploded on me, which is perfect. Now, the next thing I wanna do is to make sure all the various voltage rails show the correct voltages. With the negative probe on a ground on this power supply, I'm going to probe every single one of these pins to make sure the voltages are correct. The orange ones are going to be 3.3 volts, the red ones are 5 volts, the yellow ones are 12 volts, the blue one's going to be negative 12, and the purple one is going to be 5 volts. So now I'm going to check the MOLUS connector and the 12 volt rail. It's going to be kind of hard for me to be able to probe the SATA ports here, but I'm pretty confident that with the fact that the voltages on the 24 port connector is good, that uh, these will also read well and good. Five volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. Perfect. I'm pretty confident at this point, especially with the fact that the fan in the power supply is whirring along. It hasn't exploded on me that this power supply is actually pretty good. This is the motherboard from the system. This motherboard has a problem. If you know anything about electronics history, between the late 90s and well into the 2000s, there was a bunch of bad capacitors that were made its way out into the market. This one has that problem. That's the bad news. The good news is they're all the same value. Even better, I have a pile of them. So because I have a little bit of background into electronics and know how to solder a thing or two, I'm going to attempt to repair this motherboard. The worst I can do is destroy the motherboard and make a non-functional motherboard just as non-functional. Let's see. I went ahead and marked on this motherboard the capacitors I'm going to have to replace. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get the solder on here wicked up and hopefully get the capacitors out of here without destroying the board. So I've got one of these capacitors out and as you can see these are 820 microfarad 6.7 volt electrolytic capacitors. And what I mean by them failing is this top here has domed which means they've attempted to vent. In the case of some of these capacitors, they already have. These replacements are the exact same value as the ones that I've pulled out. However, as you can see, they're a little bit taller, but that shouldn't matter on this board because there's not really a clearance problem um, around where these capacitors are. With that out of the way, this motherboard should be good to go. With a fresh application of thermal paste, this computer should boot. Well, it seems like this machine actually turns on. It's not unhappy and it boots. It's 
making a double beep after it goes through startup diagnostics, but it's not an indication of a computer broken tone, but more of a something's not right sound. I don't have a VGA capable monitor here in my workshop, so I'll take this home and give it a once over, run some Dell diagnostics on it, do some final checks, and hopefully get XP running on this thing. It seems like the, uh, the double beep was simply that the fact that there's a floppy diskette seek failure in the machine and it just could not find something to boot to. This may indicate a hard drive failure or that there just isn't an operating system installed. So I'm gonna run some diagnostics on it and we'll see if this machine is good. Okay then, apparently the OS that's on the machine is booting. This was my grandma's old machine, so I guess there's still some stuff on here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and poke around here off camera and see if I can get some data off of it. All right, so rather than wiping the machine, I'll just go ahead and create a new account, get all of my grandma's data off of this machine and then remove her account from it. For now, I'm gonna reboot the machine, boot it into some diagnostic software and see if there's anything wrong with the machine. So this is a Dell diagnostic disc that they usually only give to Dell technicians. Uh, I used to be a certified Dell technician. This was just from those days. This disc is good for Dells from the late 90s up until about 2010. Beyond that, your mileage may vary, but uh, yeah, it's fairly good for just testing the entire system. So I've switched to this testing mode because uh, uh, the mouse I have connected apparently doesn't work correctly in this, but otherwise worked fine in XP. So far it seems that the uh, DVD ROM drive has a problem, as in the firmware may have gone bad on it, and otherwise it seems to be working just fine. There doesn't seem to be much of a problem. I'm going to continue testing and ignore that failure. So the diagnostics for the machine seem to have passed all tests. I don't know why I didn't want to be with the hard drive the first time. I'm not going to investigate that too hard. It may just be an old hard drive. Who knows? I can run another test on that later and I may actually still do that. I'm just going to run a quick memory test to see if it's fine. It looks like the memory tests are fine. I'm going to go ahead and stop this just to save me a little bit of time and go ahead and check the smart before booting it back into Windows. All right, so it seems like it passed diagnostics on the hard drive. I'm even more confounded as to why I didn't want to boot off the hard drive the first time, but I do not plan on investigating that much further right now. I'm going to go ahead and poke in the BIOS a little bit, see if I can get rid of that floppy disk get seek failure error, because that's going to get really annoying every time uh, this machine gets booted. Excellent. I can turn the floppy drive off from BIOS, and that error shouldn't come back. This should boot properly into Windows XP as it is. It's not perfect, and it's got some things that are starting to fail, but the bones of the machine, the processor, the memory, and motherboard are in good working health. I'm confident that once the hard drive and DVD burner are replaced, this thing should dutifully serve the person I send this off to for many, many more years. And I think that's what's fantastic about these machines. It's not particularly fast, it's not particularly special, but in some small way, it's a relatively reliable steed saddled with the curse of bad capacitors I brought it out of storage, gave it some minimal maintenance, and performed a relatively simple repair, and now it's ready for more. Thank you for watching.